RFD TV presents Gentle Giant with Pam Minnick and Katie Kaufman. This week, we are honored to be at Arlington National Cemetery along fallen heroes on this, the 150th anniversary of this sacred ground. Gentle Giants has been granted special access by the Department of Defense. That's right, Pam. We are here at the Military Stables, home of the Quezon Platoon, the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment known as the Old Guard. We'll meet the horses and soldiers entrusted with this solemn tradition when Gentle Giants begins. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. In the shadow of the nation's capital is the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment. It's the oldest active duty regiment in the Army, having been organized in 1784. This caisson tradition began in the days of horse-drawn artillery. For the United States military, the Armed Forces' final farewell is steeped in tradition and ceremony going back to President George Washington. While this solemn tradition is carried out daily here at Arlington National Cemetery, the American public is most familiar with the televised funerals of Presidents John F. Kennedy and Ronald Reagan. Prominent in a military funeral is the flag-draped casket. The custom began when a flag was used to cover the dead as they were taken from the battlefield on a caisson. The caissons used today are replicas of early 20th century wagons used for 75 millimeter cannons and originally equipped with ammunition chests, tools, and more. The 3rd United States Infantry is a regiment of the United States Army. It is readily identified by its nickname, the Old Guard. Part of the Old Guard is funerals, but that is only a part of the Old Guard. Uh, they are also responsible for ceremonies and special events around the Capital Region. The Quezon Platoon, uh, our primary mission is funerals in Arlington Cemetery. We conduct 1,700 funerals per year, uh, supporting all five branches of the Department of Defense. And so the soldiers that are interested in coming to Quezon, the soldiers that are interested specifically in, in riding for us, are the ones that are here in their hearts to conduct funerals, to, to render the final honors to our nation's departed in Arlington National Cemetery. And every day that the soldiers ride into Arlington Cemetery, uh, we are reminded of the solemnity of our mission here and of the importance of what we do. Uh, our stables here were actually built in 1908. Uh, prior to that, this was the site of a Union Army horse farm going all the way back to the Civil War. Uh, this, these stables were originally the stables for the headquarters department of the Army and the Mounted Army Band. Uh, they've had horses in them continuously. The 3rd Cavalry was stationed here briefly, and the 703rd Military Police Battalion were stationed here carrying out funeral honors while the 3rd Cavalry was deployed forward in World War II. When the, the Old Guard was reactivated in 1948 and the Quezon Platoon was stood up to take over funeral honors uh, from the 703rd MP Battalion, these became the Quezon Platoon Stables and have been for 66 years. This entire row of buildings used to be stables at one point in time just because they had so many horses here. And the Quezon platoon actually originated in 1948. Um, and it's been with the old guard ever since. And really, I do not, I don't think a lot has changed from that point on. I know that the mission set just with the, all the aging veterans and the wars that we've been in, the mission set has increased. We now do eight funerals a day, typically, and then we'll have reserve missions that'll pop up, so we'll have to have three, three caissons ready to roll at any point in time. Typical day, we start at 4.30, and uh, we come and get all the horses ready uh, for the day, um, wash them, um, get them all cleaned up, and then usually we'll have one or two guys that are shining all the brass that goes into the cemetery, so that takes about an hour, and then, at 6.30, we'll uh, start tacking up the horses, uh, get them all, everything ready, as ready as we can until we take them outside. 
Um, and we take them outside at 7.30, and we hook them all together and hook them up to the wagon, and by about 8 o'clock, we're, uh, we're going in the cemetery for the day. Well, everything gets done by multiple people, and everything is checked over once, twice, three times before it actually goes out into the cemetery. We make sure all of our brass is polished, and it all gets checked throughout the day multiple times. Uh, so we make sure all of our gear is squared away and we make sure it looks its best for the people that we're doing it for. From a personal perspective, I do have friends that are buried in Arlington Cemetery. That is the reason why I came to the Old Guard and why I came to the Quezon Platoon. Uh, Arlington Cemetery itself is 640 acres of, of testament to our nation's commitment to our departed heroes, but, but primarily to their families. It is a monument for those who are left behind uh, to those that have departed uh, as a way of, of sharing in the grief and in the loss of those who have lost loved ones in the service of their country. A lot of these soldiers um, have experienced combat. You know, they've, they've been overseas. They have friends that are in the Arlington National Cemetery there. And um, we have one soldier, his father's in, in the cemetery. It's uh, those guys, they have a, a different understanding. We chose to do this, we, we were selected to do this, so we carried out the best of our abilities. Some of the soldiers had no prior horse training. Volunteering for the Quezon Platoon is both an honor and a challenge. We'll learn more when Gentle Giants returns. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. The men and women here are trained infantrymen. A soldier on this team must undergo rigorous training to ride in the erect posture of solemn military attention and sitting on a vintage-style McClellan saddle. Most of us, including myself, has never had horse experience at all, never ridden a horse or anything like that before. The closest I've been to a horse, 42nd Street, um, the Mounted Police Officers, um, Central Park. In the first few weeks here, it was pretty fast, it was dirty. You learn you know, how to handle the horses, how to take care of the horses, what to do around certain horses, what you can do with one horse, you can't do with another horse. Um, but after that, you just you, you learn it, and then it's just a smooth process. It's smooth the rest of the way through. We were on a run one day, and I saw a formation of like eight horses ride by. Um, they used to ride around post, um, just as like morale boosting uh, thing. So um, I just saw them one day, and I was like, hey, I, you know, that's what I want to do. So I uh, volunteered and uh, did the interview process and the training class, and uh, that's how I got here. There'd be a nine-week training program, which is held out at our Fort Belvoir facility, where you learn basic horseman's riding, you learn horse hygiene, and uh, just how to take care of horses, and just the basic needs and signs of, you know, when horses get upset or, you know, when they're relaxed, and just basically all you need to know for, you know, to come work with horses in a short amount of time. My biggest was, surprise was. Um, how hard it actually was to stay on a horse because I'm not going to lie, I was the guy that fell off the most in my training class. So. But then once you find your seat and everything, it's the most addicting thing that I've ever done in my life. I've learned that, that if you can ask a horse to do something rather than telling a horse to do something, you will often get better results. Uh, I've learned most of the time how to keep my seat when, when you have to sit deep. Uh, but the the fundamentals of horsemanship that I've learned here uh, are, I think, enough to, for, to allow me to continue to ride for pleasure for the rest of my life. Now, I didn't even know the place really existed until where this opportunity would come available for anyone in the Army, you know. Um, it's just, uh, with my background growing up in an agriculture environment and then being in the Army, it's just kind of a good handshake between the two of them. 
When we have people come in for our tours and they say, you must love your job, and I say, absolutely. There's no other job like this, not only in the Army, but in all the branches. Um, who could say, yeah, I come in and I work with horses every day. However, I'm still in the Army. I mean, it's, it's so unique and rewarding. This is our, uh, our platoon farrier shop. Uh, I am uh, Joe Morrison, the NCYC of the farrier shop. I, I like horses, like being around them. I thought this would be a great opportunity, and it, it worked out for me. I rode in the cemetery in funerals for a year, and during that time, I tried to spend as much time in the farrier shop as I could. And it was noticed, and then in July of 2012, I was asked to join the farrier shop as a farrier, and I guess, as they say, the rest is history. I really love what I do. Getting to work with horses every day, getting to shoe, I'm getting to work with my hands, and I really enjoy what I do. To get around the, the wear from the asphalt on the shoes, we use Borium. It's a tungsten composite. We put Borium studs on all of our shoes. This gives them a little bit of traction out in the cemetery. Uh, it also helps these shoes last longer, so I can reuse the same shoes uh, a couple times. Uh, these guys, a lot like myself and a lot like most of the platoon, had very little horse experience coming in. And, uh, but they, like myself, just showed an interest in working in the shop and getting to know how to shoe a horse. The leathersmith is um, Mr. Eugene Burks. He's been here for 33 years now. He builds all the tech, repairs all the tech, and then he puts the, the, all the soldiers through um, a tack adjustment class for the seasons, you know. I mean, in the hot weather, they need to understand what's gonna, if you see signs of, you know, rubbing, anything like that. that and he, he explains it, and he, he understands what it's like to break it down to their level, you know, and explain how things that the girth or the cinch is too tight, um, how you check for that. Most people don't spend as much time as we do cleaning their tire. Most people will, when they ride, they'll wipe it off and they'll hang it up in the barn somewhere. But these guys do this every day uh, in the mornings and in, and in the afternoon. Every time they ride, they're trained to clean and uh, evaluate their tack. Everything that we make is is made out, uh, strictly from this 1916 field artillery manual. Prior to this, we used to actually go out to vendors, and each vendor had their own version of what they thought that piece should look like and consist of. So that created a problem so that if something was to break inside the cemetery, we, would, we wouldn't know what broke because there'd be so many different versions of it. Well, now we have everything on my, on my, on, in this book here, I call this my little Bible, and this tells us the original, it's, it's, it's blueprints of the original equipment, tells us the thickness of the leather, stitch count, so what this allowed us to do is to standardize everything. So if something breaks now, we just go to the board, no downtime, and replace the piece. The Quezon Platoon participates in as many as eight funerals a day here at Arlington National Cemetery. When General Giants returns, we'll follow a soldier's last ride. to Gentle Giants. The horses that pull the case on through the quiet lanes of Arlington National Cemetery are matched gray or black. The platoon considers it an honor to pay final respects to fallen heroes. Our horses know their jobs better than we do, but being able to work with these animals, being able to work and, and see uh, the dedication that they have, uh, not just to each other but, but to the mission they understand the solemnity of what we're doing they will play with each other and they'll they'll bite at each other and nip uh, right up until the band starts playing and once the band starts playing and the funeral has started uh, all seven of the horses immediately 
Uh, you can feel the difference in them, and they can feel the difference in their riders. Uh, but during the funerals, they are all very composed and very solemn. They know when they're on the job. They, they know how to transition from when you're just walking in a cemetery to when the funeral actually starts. There's a big difference in how they react. When the funeral starts, they actually just 100% lock it up and walk real slow, walk at the pace that they're told, and they're really professional. We use a style called ponying, in which you have two horses that the rider controls. Uh, the near horse, um, usually the taller of the two, is being ridden, while the other horse back in the day would carry supplies and ammo and food, anything that the rider uh, needed for the journey. Uh, now it's just an off horse that helps pull the wagon. Our rear position is our wheel riding position. They're typically reserved for our larger horses because all the braking power comes from these two horses. Um, we also have the most experienced rider on these two horses. Here is Ringo, and on the other side is our one mare, female horse. Her name is Babe, nicknamed Baby Girl. Um, next, we have our swing riding position. That's usually our new soldiers who are just coming from our training class get put on this position. It's the least, least experienced rider and their main job is turning. So when we make a left turn, they'll swing to the right to make it as wide as possible because as you can see, it's quite a length to make a turn. Uh, next we have the lead riding position. Their main job is to maintain pace count behind the funeral procession. Uh, we go off a 21 pace count behind the chaplain during the funeral.
the, the most rewarding part of being in the Quezon platoon is definitely uh, being able to work with these animals on a daily basis. It's a really big honor. It's the last thing the family sees, usually with the military. So we try and be as perfect as possible for that family. It, it's a great honor. Uh, you bond with the horses and you get to see your work being fulfilled and how much the family appreciate it. A lot of times they'll come in afterwards and take a tour of the caisson barn and they'll thank us and the gratitude that they show us is immense. We want to thank all of you for watching Gentle Giants this week. It was truly an honor being here at Arlington National Cemetery. This is sacred ground. We want to thank the United States Department of Defense for granting us access to the soldiers here at Fort Myer and to the men and women of the 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Join us right here next week on Gentle Giants. And in the meantime, you can always check us out on Facebook. Bye now.